But I think that you could at least make the case that they were trying to downplay it, not because they were trying to give people a false, in, you know, false information, but that they were trying to keep panic from setting in. Okay, but if you're going to use that argument, you have to use the same argument with President Trump. If the media is going to be mad at President Trump for downplaying it, even though I've already explained that's not what he was doing, they have to be equally mad at all of these people. Hey there, fellow tacticians. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that little notification bell because the more likes and subscriptions I get, the more people see my conservative content, which will make America a better place and angers the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. And another thing too, Democrats have also been downplaying the virus around this time. Because remember, that first recording that we heard from President Trump, that takes place on February the 7th. And then where he says that he would, you know, like to downplay the virus, that his instincts were to downplay the virus and to make it to where it sounds like it's not a big deal, that clip comes on March 19th. What were Democrats saying around this time in the coronavirus pandemic? Well, I'm glad you asked because I put together a video compilation of exactly that. The risk to New Yorkers for coronavirus is low. There's really no need to panic and to avoid activities that we always do as New Yorkers. This should not stop you from going about your life, should not stop you from going to Chinatown and going out to eat. I'm going to do that today myself. Come to Chinatown. Here we are. We're, again, careful, safe, and come join us. But I want to take a moment to say it's not a time to panic about coronavirus. We think we have the best health care system on the planet right here in New York. Amen. So uh, when you're saying what happened in other countries versus what happened here, uh, we don't even think it's going to be as bad as it was in other countries. You cannot contain the spread. You can slow it, you can limit it, but you can't contain it. That isn't a cause for anxiety either. It's not people in the stadium. It's not people in the big uh, open area or a conference and all. It's people close up to each other. Some places like Italy are doing mass school closures. That's not on the menu here. It, is there a theoretical uh, scenario where that could happen? Of course. But is it anywhere near to where we are now? No. The Department of Sanitation is ready for Mardi Gras. This is not Ebola. This is not SARS. This is not some science fiction movie come to life. Uh, you know, the hysteria here is way uh, out of line with the actuality and the fact. If you had to, would you close down the borders? No. There's a lot of restaurants that are feeling the pain of racism, uh, where people are literally not patroning Chinese restaurants. If you're under 50 and you're healthy, which is most New Yorkers, uh, there's very little threat here. This disease, even if you were to get it, basically acts like a common cold or flu. And transmission is not that easy. Downplaying it, being overly dismissive, or spreading misinformation is only going to hurt us and further advantage the spread of the disease. But neither should we panic or fall back on xenophobia. Labeling COVID-19 a foreign virus does not displace accountability for the misjudgments that have been taken thus far by the Trump administration. And travel restrictions based on favoritism and politics rather than a risk will be counterproductive. Staying home from work if you're ill. We want people still to go on about their lives. We want people uh, to rest assured that a lot is being done to protect them. That's an awful lot of heavy hitters in the Democrat Party suggesting that we shouldn't be doing travel bans, that we shouldn't be taking these kind of precautions, that the hysteria is way overblown, that it's not going to be that big a deal, that you should just, as Mayor de Blasio said at the last part of that, you should go about your life saying that there's no intention, that we're, we're not going to be shutting down schools, that's not on the docket here, we don't think it's going to be as bad in other countries. Uh, Joe Biden, in that last clip that he was in, saying, uh, yeah, you should probably stay at home, you know, from work if you're feeling bad, but no intention of actually closing down businesses or closing down places where you would work 
wholesale, just if you're not feeling well, then maybe you don't go in. By the way, it's hilarious because I agree with like 90% of what was said there. Uh, maybe not AOC suggesting that people are racist by not go- <laughs> because they're not going to Chinese restaurants. Uh, nobody was going to restaurants at that point. That was, it was not, they were not singling out the Chinese uh, because of that. But anyway, so you have every bit of that. The Democrats over and over and over again downplaying the virus, and you could chalk all of that up to them just not wanting the public to panic, not to, to you know, spiral into a tailspin, which is, frankly, I think fair in most cases. I think there were plenty of policy decisions made by those same people that were incredibly idiotic, the worst of all being Governor Cuomo, who was literally saying that you can't keep COVID-19 positive people out of nursing homes. But overall, or, you know, Bill de Blasio, that didn't disinfect the subway until like two months ago. Uh, you know, idiotic things like that. I, I, I want to say it was June, wasn't it? It was June where he, the first time they disinfected the subway. So all of that is the case. Yeah, I mean, you, you've got the, the blatant policy problems and doing things that were stupid, but I think that you could at least make the case that they were trying to downplay it, not because they were trying to give people a false, in, in, you know, false information, but that they were trying to keep panic from setting in. Okay, but if you're going to use that argument, you have to use the same argument with President Trump. If the media is going to be mad at President Trump for downplaying it, even though I've already explained that's not what he was doing, they have to be equally mad at all of these people. And you don't see anybody at the Washington Post or, you know, doing this for those people. Actually, I will say the Washington Post may be the only exception to that because I believe that the Bill de Blasio clip was the the one that they assembled. But uh, you're not seeing that on MSNBC for sure. That's not happening on CNN where Andrew Cuomo's little brother has a primetime show. I mean, this is just not something that the left wants to focus on, but if you're going to be mad at Trump for downplaying the virus, you have to be mad at these people for doing exactly the same thing right along that same timeline. As late as, in Mayor de Blasio's case, March 13th, saying, look, this is not something that should actually like affect your life or anything. You should just go about your business uh, doing your normal stuff. And the, the blatant double standard just drives me up a wall. And the thing is, Holding people to the standard of 10 seconds ago is dumb. It's dumb, for example, when you look back at, you know, people that were living in the mid-1700s or late 1700s and upset at them for not holding to the sensibilities and standards of 10 seconds ago. It's equally as dumb to look at a situation like this And look, all the way back in March, where there were a whole lot more unknowns and question marks, and we didn't know exactly what was going to take place, and judge them by today's standard as well. I actually wound up agreeing with most of the things that the Democrats in those videos were saying, because the thing is, it turned out the virus wasn't nearly as big a deal as people originally thought that it was going to be. And so, I was far more likely, uh, far more inclined to agree with some of the things or the sentiments that were being conveyed by them back then than I am now where anybody that says we don't need to shut down for the next 18 months is a horrible monster that wants grandma to die. Like, that, that's a much more reasonable position that they were taking back then. But the thing that's so ridiculous is, is that that's not the position of the left now but nobody's calling them out for holding a different position back then, even though they are calling out President Trump for that. None of it makes sense, and the double standard is really ridiculous. And, and you know, the last point I really want to make on this is, if this were true, if this narrative that Trump intentionally downplayed the virus despite it being very bad, even though it turned out it wasn't, if that were the case, why is no one mad at Bob Woodward? Why is nobody upset with him for sitting on this and waiting for it to come out when it coincides with his new book coming out? If you're trying to suggest that President Trump, and I've heard people try to make this case, has blood on his hands by trying to downplay the virus, then isn't Bob Woodward just as guilty by sitting on this recording and not releasing it to the public all these months? Why is it on February 8th or February 9th? 
that Bob Woodward didn't put this out and say, guys, look, the president is saying this virus is going to be super, super bad or, you know, even into March or April. Why wasn't Bob Woodward putting it out then? Because it wouldn't profit him. It would not help him sell copies of his book. This is a created hysteria to help make money. That's what it is. And it's hilarious that the party that claims to be anti-capitalism and, and anti-wealth and they want to create a wealth tax and all of this other ridiculousness, the party of socialism and AOC and Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders, they're not upset at Bob Woodworth for that. They're not saying that he has blood on his hands. That doesn't make any sense either. You know, I genuinely can't tell. I genuinely cannot tell if the left is trying to make more out of this than they really should or they really know it to be, or if Trump derangement syndrome is really this bad and they really are this dumb. I can't tell if, if the, the left just genuinely is, is trying to drum up hysteria even though they know that the hysteria should not be there, or they really are this stupid that they, they, they can't see past the red that they see, or I guess the orange in this case, they can't see past the orange uh, that just goes in front of their eyes whenever they look at anything President Trump does, or they really are trying to set him up. I really don't know. But either way, this mess has got to stop. Take a step back, take a deep breath, count to three people on the left, and ask yourself if this is really worth it or if it's really helping your cause. Because I think the American people are going to, by and large, see through this ridiculousness. We're not even going to be talking about these recordings a week from now. And anybody that is, is probably so far gone and probably has already made up their mind. They're, they're so far in the orange man bad camp that you weren't going to change their mind regardless of what happened. This is not going to be something that changes a, a person that is at least open to maybe thinking about voting for either Biden or Trump. This is not going to be something that changes their mind about that. <laughs> Hey, if you liked this video, then you should press the like button. I mean, that's literally what it's there for. If you liked the video but didn't hit the like button, then it's like getting great service but not tipping your waiter. Except liking is free, and so is subscribing and hitting the notification bell. So if you're enjoying my content but not liking my video, there's really only one explanation. It's because I'm black, isn't it?